Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back with another monster discussion. So I asked you guys what you guys would like to see this week between the Fairy King, the Neostone Agent, and the Barbaric King. And by a landslide, over 70 different people voted for the Neostone Fighters. So I guess we're going to go over a four-star this time. And this is going to be quite exciting. This is the first four-star to basically appear on a monster discussion. And I think this is a very good monster to choose to do so on, since this is one of, I would have to say, one of the top natural four stars. Based on all of the natural four stars, this is the one that has the most consistent amount of good, I guess, in between their all five attributes, okay? So we're going to go through it. And before I start, I changed it up. I'm actually using straw poll now, so I don't have to individually count every single one of them. So next week... We're going to be doing it. You guys can choose between three of them. We're going to do the Sea Emperors. Okay. Then we're going to be doing... Uh, you guys have to vote for this, of course. So the Sea Emperors. Then we can do the Mermaids. I thought that would be a little bit fun, especially with the light and dark ones. And then, just to make it interesting, I'll let you guys vote for the Dragons as well. So the Dragons, the Mermaids, and the Sea Emperors. So go ahead and go over to the straw poll. You are allowed to vote once, and we will see what gets the number one pick. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the Neostone Fighters. Oh, man, I love these. Just first off, out of all of the skins, this is by far the, my favorite skin for both the Awakened and the Unawakened versions. They just both have very unique skins, and I just... It sounds so creepy when I say that. I mean, they're like textures, right? So I think they look just absolutely badass. The long katana. Uh, they just, I don't know, they look like like an office girl to me. But I can't wait till they come out with the transmogrification for these. I'm actually saving up. I'm up around 80 stones. All right, so the first one up is Lisa. We check out the awakening skill, and it is the leader skill. that She gets a leader skill when you awaken her. You also notice that she does get a very substantial amount of increase in stats, which is always nice for a four-star and she is a support monster, so you got to keep that in mind. Her HP is going to be very high. I actually have a fire one. I can just show you the stats right here. 11.5. Wow, for the HP. The defense is a little bit low, but that HP is very high up there. I, I like that. For a 4-star, that's very nice. So, And then the um, speed is also at 104, which is really easy to work with. It would have been nice to be a little bit higher. But 104 is good. Most monsters are around the 100 range, and some are below that for natural 5 stars, which is a little bit bad. So let's look at the skills. The first skill is going to be the same for every single one of them. Attacks the enemy two times. Each attack is a 25% chance to increase the enemy's chance of, of dealing a glancing hit. Now this glancing hit may not seem like a lot to some people, but it actually is quite nice. You also get a 25% bonus chance for uh, all of the skill ups. So it's a 50% chance two hits so it's going to be 75 percent chance total to just land one glancing hit and that's not including resistance and accuracy and that kind of thing so you got to keep that in mind as well the second skill attacks an enemy and then removes all beneficial effects on the target if there are two or more beneficial effects removed the attack bar of all allies will be increased by 20 percent each so for starter players or mid-game players if you do use her against uh, i would say chloe teams you can actually remove both beneficial effects, and then you will increase the attack bar of all of your allies by 20%. So if you keep that in mind, when you bring her in cases like that, you can actually get a little bit of a bonus out of there, since she is buff removal like Belladion, but you know when you remove it, she actually boosts the attack bar of all of your ally monsters. So I would say this is like a better seize effect than the Belladion, and it is a 100% chance to remove it, but you have to include uh, accuracy and resistance, of course. So definitely an amazing buff removal. You can use this in Dragon's B10. I love Emma for Dragon's B10, or I'm sorry, Lisa for Dragon's B10, but you have to be careful because she's not a substitute for Veramos. You have to make sure you're fast enough, otherwise you won't be able to run Lisa. So now we get into this third skill, which is basically what she's used for. The third skill removes all harmful effects on all allies after that three randomly selected allies will attack on an enemy target. Okay, there's a lot of misconceptions about this third skill. It is a cleanser. She is a cleanser. It cools down to four. Once you uh, actually max skill her, it, it will go down to four. 
And on top of that, people think that the three randomly attacked allies is just some kind of like group hunt type thing. It is. Now, here's one thing that many people don't know. Those three randomly selected allies that are attacked, that, are, that should be attacked with, that like group hunt ability, that actually reduces the cooldown time of all of the skills on those three randomly selected monsters. So what does that mean? That basically means they're getting a turn while keeping their attack bar. So when you get a turn and you use your first skill, as you know, all of the cooldown times go down by one every single turn. This counts as a turn. So when you use this, the three randomly selected allies will get a cooldown time minus one, and they use their first skill, but their attack bar remains the same. It is, I would have to say, by far one of the best or better group hunt abilities. There's a lot of monsters that can do the little group hunt, but by far she is just three randomly sele selected allies. That's a lot. That is a lot. And she attacks herself. So I, I believe it's two um, allied monsters and then herself, or it might be three allied monsters and herself, but she does attack with these monsters. So it's either three monsters attacking or four. I believe it's three. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but definitely very, very nice. She also gets this nice leader skill for guild battles, 24% crit rate. Mm, that's like that's like Theomars right there. So definitely one of the better Neostone fighters. I absolutely love her. I have her. Everyone's trying to get her. Everyone's crazy about her. All right, so the next one, of course, is Emma. And this is the one that I just almost confused the name with on Lisa. So Emma, for awakening ability, gets a leader skill. I believe maybe all of them get leader skills on their awakening. Maybe not the dark one. But same first skill. Then same second skill where she can buff removal, and this is what makes her good for dra uh, Dragon's B10 as well. Look at this third skill. Heals all allies by 30% of your max HP and increases the defense for two turns. This skill generates a shield that lasts for two turns and is equivalent of half of the excessive heal. Whoa. Wow. Okay, wowzers. All right. So first off, what does it mean? Well, a lot of people compare, compare her to Belladion uh, it is not the case. It heals all allies by 30% of Emma's max HP. So for monsters that have really high defense, not a lot of HP or like nukers, this is going to be almost like a 100% heal. So let's say she has 10,000 HP. You're going to be healing for 3,000. All right. Now this is just a small example. You should have way more than 10,000 HP, but you will heal by 30% of Emma's max HP. And that applies to all monsters. Whereas Belladion's heal is 30% of every single monster's individual HP. So let's say another monster only has 1,000 HP, they heal for 300. Whereas some other monster has more HP, they heal for more. Whereas Emma's, it's a straight 30% of her HP on all different monsters, okay? On top of that, she increases the defense. So you get a defense buff for two turns. Incredible. And then this skill generates a shield that absorbs damage, and it's equivalent to half of the heal. Wow. All right. So this has to be, I would have to say, one of the stronger heals in the game. There's some monsters that just heal like crazy, like Braha heal is just incredible. But And Chisun obviously has a really nice heal. But just comparing one skill to the other, I'd have to say Emma has the strongest heal for PvE. I would definitely say for PvE, this has to be the strongest heal in the game. And I'll tell you why. First off, the heal is very, very incredible. You want to basically just slap on a crap ton of HP, and then that way you can get the largest heal possible. On top of that, you get a defense buff for two turns, which is going to be reducing damage incoming, and that is just incredible as well. Then you can absorb damage with the shield, which is half of the excessive heal, which means if you're healing for like, what, let's say you heal for like 10k, maybe 15k, which is totally viable, you could totally reach that, you're going to be getting shield for anywhere from a few thousand up to maybe into the five digits. That is, honestly, has to be one of the best kits for a support role. And just looking at the HP stats and the defense stats, the HP, the base HP is a little bit lower than Emma's, which means she probably caps out around 10k, which is a little bit harder to work with, so maybe hitting 50,000 uh, or a little bit lower than that, is a little bit less, I would say, optimistic. Or, I mean, you should say, like, it's not as easy to reach. But you do have high defense, which means it's easier to build her as, like, a hybrid type thing. 
but definitely you're going to be building her very fast and very, very tanky. And that way you can just have the best type of support role for Emma. I've been trying to get her. Unfortunately, I don't have her. So that's definitely something I need to work on. Also, guys, don't forget when you're making a Dragon's B10 team, Emma is by far one of the better options. Not only does she go in as like Bella Dion with the little buff removal, she brings glancing hit, which is always nice. And she buffs defense, and the heal is very strong, and she brings a shield. <laughs> very, very good. Now, the resistance is 40% for guild battles. It's not something that you would see very often. I've seen it a couple times, but honestly, I don't think this leader skill is very strong. If they changed it over to an HP leader skill, I think Emma would be one of the uh, better monsters for that type of role. But uh, unfortunately, it's a resistance-based leader skill, so you don't get much out of it, and it's really RNG-based. But maybe they'll fix in the future. I don't know. I feel like Emma is a very strong role uh, if you need that kind of monster. The next one is Olivia. By far one of the more underrated monsters. And uh, we'll talk about it why. So for the first skill is the same. Now if you look at the base stats, uh, she has actually a little bit less defense than Emma. But more than Lisa. Oh, come on. There. More than Lisa. But she's like smack dab in the middle. So she has less HP or a little bit more HP but a little bit less defense than Emma. And she has a little she's got less HP than Lisa, but more defense than Lisa. So she's like right smack dab in the middle. Now these base stats are actually not bad at all. I would say they're pretty strong for a support another support monster. I think all of these uh Neostone fighters are basically support roles. Uh you can build different types. I've seen some damage Lisa surprisingly enough. Now look at this the second one is definitely a different type of skill. It removes all harmful effects on an ally target and fills up the ally's attack bar. So basically it's like a resurge ability from Konamaya, but Konamaya increases the attack power. So she attack buffs and fills up the attack bar all the way of an ally monster. Whereas Olivia basically cleanses and then fills up the attack bar. So this is not something you would use for damaging, but rather to get a turn in when you need that turn. And you can cleanse them if they're stunned. So that would be really nice, especially for a resurge ability. Now the third skill is where she's basically used. Attacks the enemy two times with each attack, decreasing the target's attack bar by 25%. Additionally, this attack will increase the defense of all allies for three turns. Now, let's, let's think about this for a sec. Single target, decreasing the attack bar by 25%. If you, let's, say, let's assume you actually get it. It's a 50% attack bar reduction, and then you increase the defense of all allies for three turns. I'm going to assume that that cooldown time at least goes down to four turns, which for Emma and Lisa, it does go down to four on that third skill. So I'm going to assume Olivia goes down to, three as w or, uh, down to four as well. It's three-turn defense buff. So you're going to have one turn with Olivia where you don't have the defense buff. And now let's say you bring Mav or Jemai or someone that reduces cooldown time of monster's skills. That actually becomes less and it's almost guaranteed that you're going to have defense buff for the entire duration of wherever you are. Now this is mainly like a, a TOA monster. You know, you guys kind of understand that right there. All right, so it's a Trial of Ascension type monster. Since you are reducing attack bar for like boss stages, stuff like that. Defense buff, very good for Trial of Ascension hard mode, like Basalt. And then, of course, you got Glancing Hit, which is also really good if you don't have it just soon because you need Glancing. Or if you don't have Aria for AoE Glancing. And then this uh, Cleanse, like Resurge ability, very good on manual mode. If you need someone to get a turn, like a healer, and they're stunned or something like that, boom, right there. You're going to heal. So very, very incredible. Now it's kind of uh, something, it's a little bit less used in guild battles because it's a defense-based leader skill, which is always very nice when you need it. But you don't really see Olivia that many times in guild battles. And the many times that I have seen her, she never really shines. So not, definitely not a PvP monster, I would say. I would definitely say she's more of a Child Ascension monster. So if you don't have Basalt, a lot of people love Basalt for his provoke, his heal, his defense buff, and his attack bar reduction. This is an alternative. It was a Hall of Hero Monsters. I have one saved up. We might actually see this more used. And I'll tell you why. If the next Rift boss doesn't strip buffs and, and instead buffs are actually something you really want, Olivia might be something that we look at. She reduces the attack bar, defense buff, resurge and cleanse, and then glancing hit. The full package, the only thing is you don't really want to bring that many buffs into Rift because majority of the times they're just going to be taken away anyway, so there's no point in bringing a monster 
just a buff, unless it's an attack power buff. So one of the more, I would say, underrated monsters, definitely, because she's not bad, but she just doesn't have a place yet in the game. So the next monster is one that I have not really seen very often. I've never used her. I don't really know how she is. I saw her in the Hall of, he uh, Hall of Heroes with Olivia. Iliana. Iliana is by far a beaut. She's a natural four star light monster. She does have some pretty nice base HP and the defense is pretty up there. Higher base HP uh, than, er, sorry, higher base defense than any of the previous three. And the HP is almost right there with Lisa. So the best stats by far of these four attributes before we get into the dark one, of course. And she does bring, of course, the same first skill, the Resurge and Cleanse. But the third skill, this is where it gets interesting. Protects allies with holy powers. The target ally will become invincible for two turns, and all other allies will receive Endure for one turn. I personally, I think this goes down to six turns, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I personally don't think this currently has any place in the game, really. The Endure for one turn and the Invincibility for two turns is actually quite nice, but if you're looking for Invincibility for two turns, stuff like Neil actually does it better in Trial of Ascension since basically the cooldown is enough that you can get her to go fast enough, then you can get her to put on, like stack on the Invincibility before the slow monster that's tanking actually gets out of the Invincibility. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain in that way, but this one is just really high cooldown for two turn Invincibility and one turn Endure. But if you can get this on the right team, I don't know where this will be useful yet. It can be used in some areas. Now, I just I don't see her being really useful in any place yet. We might see her be useful in the future, like I said, when Rift opens up new bosses, if they add stuff that is really reliable on buffs, this might be something that might be okay. Okay? Don't hold me don't hold my word on that. She might be okay for that type of scenario. But right now, I just don't think she has a place in the game. And of course, she's got that guild battle leader skill for attack power. Uh, again, you know, not an attack monster. She's a support monster. Very low attack power. The lowest of all four of those. Uh, so she's not going to be using the attack power boost uh, anytime soon. So let me know what you guys think about Ileana too. Because I just, I don't know. I just, I feel like she's very lackluster in a sense. But she could potentially be good for the future. This is the one that we've been waiting for. Sylvia. The natural five-star Nia Stone Fighter. She is incredible. She has very high base HP. Now, the base HP and the base defense and the attack power are all obviously going to be higher than these previous four, and that's because this shows them at max level five-star, whereas these, this natural five-star shows it at max level six-star. So the stats are going to be a lot different. Like, as I showed you, Lisa actually has 11.5. Uh, okay, I should say in total terms, 11,500 base HP at 6 star max level. Well, Sylvia has less HP. That's that's a given, but has a lot more defense. The speed is the same as the rest of these. They're all at 104 speed, which is kind of interesting, actually. Uh, I think this is one of the few monsters that actually has the same base speed in all attributes. But this is where she gets incredible. Okay, same first skill. The second skill is that buff removal. Very nice, always nice to have. And then this passive ability, one of the strongest passives, if not the strongest passive ability in the game. A randomly selected ally also attacks when you attack during your turn. Remember what we talked about with Lisa with that little group hunt style thing, right? Well, this is basically that, but every single uh, time Sylvia moves, a monster is going to get paired with her to attack with her. That monster's cooldown time will also go down by one. Oh, battery of course <laughs> and basically it's just a very strong skill if you compare her very fast with someone like theo mars and vertihill you could potentially just get a ton of turns if you paired her with like vertihill and theo mars you get a turn vertihill goes his attack bar doesn't go down i mean technically it's a turn but it's not his turn so his attack bar stays the same he boosts the attack bar of all the ally monsters by 40 percent and then he's going to get another turn, which is going to boost it by another 40%. You're going to get, you're basically going to get a full free turn. And it's also paired with one of the best leader skills in the game. 33% attack speed. There are only 
four monsters in the game currently with 33% speed. Vanessa, Trinity for Arena, uh, Sylvia for Guild Battles, or Guild Wars, I should say, and then this one for Arena. I didn't know his name, so I saved it for last. Samath? Sam Samith? I'll just say it's Samith. Samith also gets 33% uh, attack speed for monsters in Arena. So Sylvia is the only monster with 33% attack speed for guild battles. That is very strong. I'd have to say almost the best leader skill for guild battles, actually. Pair her with some really good attack monsters, uh, very speedy team, and you could be potentially looking at yourself a very strong defense. So you guys obviously know what I'm going to say. Obviously, Sylvia is the best of the Neostone fighters. She's a top tier. I would say she's one of the best natural five stars out there just in general. Very strong, very strong. One of my dream monsters, actually. So S Sylvia is obviously my pick. And for my reaction, of course, the less useful is going to have to be Ileana. Uh, if you guys use her, let me know where you use her. I just don't see where she would be useful currently in the current status of the game. I don't think she's bad, per se. I think she's got a really unique kit. But I just don't see any place where she would specifically outshine any other monster that could pretty much do a better job than she does. So that's my thoughts on the Neostone Fighters. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to stop by the straw poll, okay? We are doing the Sea Emperors, just to reiterate, the Dragons, and the Mermaids. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys next time when we do a monster discussion. Stay awesome, guys.